So I'm going to blow your minds right out of the gate here. Did you know that a tapeworm requires an intermediate host in the kitty cat? So any cat that has a tapeworm ate a flea not too long ago. Hey guys, my name is Dan. I'm a veterinarian. And today we're going to cover tapeworms in the kitty cat. Also, what symptoms you may notice, how we're going to diagnose it, and treatment. Tapeworms have these little mouths that just grab a hold of the intestine when they're in the kitty cat, and they start to just grow and get longer and longer and longer, and they make little segments called proglottids. And these proglottids break off, and they just travel out of the cat, and they're pooped out. You're going to notice something on your cat's butt. Some people say it's like a piece of rice that's moving. It's like dancing. It's moving a little bit, but it's a piece of rice. So if you pull up your kitty's tail, you're going to see these little bits of rice on the tail, or a pet owner, or you, may notice it in the cat's poop. So they look down, you see the litter box, and there's, there's a little log there of poop, and there's these little white pieces of rice just moving. So those proglottids break off, and they just get pooped out of the kitty cat. When they, when they land, they have like a whole bunch of tapeworm eggs in them. And here's the kicker. That tapeworm egg that just got pooped out cannot reinfect that kitty, cannot reinfect other kitties, without, without a flea. So the most common tapeworm is Diplidium caninum. Diplidium caninum is a tapeworm that needs a flea to move on to the kitty. It's almost like, like Aliens, the movie. What a, what a great series. So the flea walks over and it eats up the tapeworm eggs. And then the tapeworms grow in and they grow as the flea matures and you know gets ready for the kitty cat. So the cat's hanging out, minding its own business. It feels something. You know, it's a flea. It swings back there, chews on the on its, on its like on its leg. You know, to like itch its butt. And then as it's doing that, it swallows the flea unintentionally. Once it ingests that flea, that flea goes tumbling through the intestinal tract, and boom, like just like aliens, these tapeworms just come out of the flea. And because of the requirement of the flea as an intermediate host, the tapeworms can now spread inside of that cat's intestines. That is the life cycle of a tapeworm. When you walk in, the vet's gonna notice it on the cat's butt, or you're gonna show them pictures, or show them an actual proglottid that came out of your kitty cat. That's how we're gonna diagnose them. Based on that, the veterinarian can either use an oral or an injectable tapeworm medication. Always ask your veterinarian what's the best taper medication for a kitty cat. Kitty cats are pretty picky, so we want to make sure we pick the best medication for the safest results. And then, to prevent reinfection, make sure there's no fleas in the house. Because with the tapeworm Diplidium caninum, it doesn't matter, you know, like if you're like, ah, Dr. Dan, there are no fleas in my house. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. If your kitty cat has Diplidium caninum, there is a requirement for an intermediate flea host to carry the tapeworms. You get all the fleas out of your house, do a flea med for your kitty cat, that, that cornerstone of a flea to help grow the tapeworm population is being removed and the life cycle is broken. So treat the fleas, treat the tapeworms, and magically you have a much healthier kitty cat. Overall, kitty cats do okay with tapeworms. more of a nuisance than anything else. It's just really gross. A lot of kitty cats still have normal poop. They're not throwing up. They feel just fine, actually, in most cases. But we don't want tapeworms in the kitty cat, in your kitty cat, in your apartment, in your house. So that's why we definitely get them treated to make sure the cat's as healthy as possible.